Welcome to A Photographer's Life. The channel that takes you behind the curtain into the world of professional architectural photography. Join us now for a special webinar from Pixie, the company that finds and fights copyright image theft for photographers. Today's broadcast is hosted by AIAP Director Alan Blakely. We hope you enjoy the show. If you do, please let us know by liking this episode and subscribing to this channel. Now, on with the show. I just want to introduce Wanted to, to everyone here that's on the call. Um, she contacted me a couple of weeks ago and I, I was only vaguely aware of Pixie and uh, once I got looking into it, it seemed to me that it was the solution to a lot of problems. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on attorneys over the years pursuing infringements, uh, not all of which were successful. However, uh, that being said, I think that Pixie has uh, a program and a, a, a structure in place that would make that a lot more probable of recovery. And so I just wanted to introduce you to her. I thought it was worthwhile that we introduce this service to the membership. And that being said, I'll turn the time over to you on and, and just take it from here and uh, let us know what you'd like us to do, if anything. Perfect. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and share my screen so we can go through a little bit of uh, Pixie. And then I've also got uh, the actual uh, platform available for us to review as well, uh, if you have any questions. So the way we came about was actually back in 2014. And one of the things that we often draw attention to is that we're by creatives for creatives. Our company was actually started by a photographer who was having issues with his own infringements. He found that his work was ending up all over the place on the internet. And uh, nobody was listening to him when he was submitting requests for either payments for the use of his work or takedown requests it just wasn't going anywhere so he began pixie as a way to uh to address this issue and it's been very successful ever since um, we are an online service that helps photographers to track how their images are being used online and then we have tools available that help photographers take action when they're being used without their permission. So since 2014, what we've done is really build a whole ecosystem around that um, so that there's different avenues and different tools for photographers to use depending on the type of unauthorized use that they're seeing. So once your images are uploaded in our system, what we do is we scan the public in internet and provide the matches for your images online and allow you to review them and identify which ones look like they are unauthorized based off of your client base and the work that you've sold. So the problem is actually really significant and it's grown exponentially. Right now there's over 150 million commercial websites worldwide and we see use of images constantly. So based off of our investigations, we see that about 85% of websites contain copyrighted information or infringements um, of people's images. So that's more than, if you load up five images onto the internet, more than four are likely to have been infringed. Um, and with photographers uploading over 1.8 billion images on the internet every day, the theft is rampant and it's quite easy. So the way our solution works is uh, we have a four-step approach. We monitor, resolve, take down, and register images. Um, in terms of monitoring, that's where the scanning comes in. We have an AI uh, system that scans the public internet for the use of your images and delivers back results. Uh, we also have data enrichment points and categorizations for those results. So that way you're looking at um, images that are used commercially. You can look at them based off of the countries that they're being used in, based off of platforms that uh, are infringing the images so that you can really narrow down on the usage. Um, in terms of our resolution process, we pursue businesses to recover compensation on photographers' behalf. And we have uh, two ways of doing so. One is through post-licensing, where we're negotiating on your behalf for a retroactive licensing agreement or through legal enforcement. And we handle the end-to-end -end management of your cases on your behalf. So once you submit an infringement to us, we'll go ahead and we'll start the process of investigating and documenting that infringement and um, reaching out to the infringer and working on a settlement for you. 
And then we also offer a takedown service. Uh, this is a, a self-serve option for photographers to use. And these are really for those infringements that we can't take any uh, action on that will lead to financial uh, compensation. So things like blog posts or individuals using your, your images, uh, you can use our takedown service to be able to get those images removed. It's legally compliant in 35 different countries. So for those regions, we actually worked with in-market lawyers to draft the letters. So they're not generic, they're customized to each market and they're available in 14 different languages. And we send those out not only to the website, but also to the domain host. So if the website isn't quick about acting on it, the domain host will be. And then our last... Um, our last part of our solution is the registration process. And I know this would be a big deal for most of you being in the United States. Uh, we offer USCO registrations, which are mandatory in the US for any sort of legal pursuit against, um, uh, against an infringer. And what that does is if your copyright registration is registered within the USCO's definition of a timely registration, it entitles you to statutory damages of up to $150,000 um, as part of that legal process. And as part of that, we also offer a bulk image submission process where you can register up to 750 images. The only stipulation there is that those images were published online within the same calendar year, uh, but it's definitely a worthwhile process to be able to get lots of images in at once. Any questions about that? Perfect. Um, so in terms of our experience working with photographers, we presently have over 100,000 members signed up with us. That's grown quite a bit since the last time uh, I've updated the slide. We monitor over 110 million images for our photographers, and we have found over 350,000 matches for those images online. Uh, we're operational in 15 countries. And we have 26 partner law firms across the world. So what that means is that if it does have to go into legal negotiations, the case gets passed on to legal partner um, and they are specific to different jurisdictions. So it could be in Italy, it could be in Israel, it could be in the U.S., The process itself is pretty easy. Uh, once your images are uploaded, you can review the matches that result from the scans that we complete and submit cases to our team. Cases are completely free to submit. Uh, we work on a no win, no fee basis and uh, you submit the cases to us. We start the process and we keep you informed at every stage about where um, we're at in the negotiation process and the infringer information. And once this, uh, our cases are settled, then we'll go ahead and we'll pay you out directly through your account to either your bank account or your PayPal. Um, and you'll be able to recover your revenue from there. Any questions? Does the process seem relatively simple? And Norman, I see you've raised your hand. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get it up earlier, the hand up earlier, but um, with regard to, uh, to registering our copyright, um, yes. I know you had that bulk submission thing. Is there any difference between submitting our copyright registration through you or just through the copyright office? No, ultimately we register them on your behalf with the USEO. Uh, it's just a matter, we handle it for our photographers very often just because the process can be kind of daunting and it's also a little bit difficult. So if you get a registration wrong, it's kind of hard to correct. We also uh, offer a service where we review the images in the account and we can identify which ones are most infringed. So we can look at copywriting those specifically to increase the value of uh, resolutions. Okay, I have one more question. Um, yes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've gotten lazy with my copyright submissions, uh, especially when I'm really busy. And I know that there's a, a time frame to register them and, and by the time they're published and et cetera. So if you have, if you have work that you haven't registered, um, say I, I shot a job you know, two years ago yeah. and I see that someone's stealing my images online or using them other than the, the, the licensed client, uh, do I have any recourse there? So you can still register them after the fact. The timeliness factor that the USU and legally they consider in the United States is that the image was registered within the first three months of finding the infringement online. Okay. 
Hmm. If not, then it doesn't meet the timeliness criteria. And all that means is that the statutory damages option isn't open if it doesn't meet the timeliness criteria. But you can register your images at any time. Thank you. No problem. Has that, has that changed? Can I just ask? Because um, I had a, a an infringement case that went federal, and um, that was about two years ago, at, and that was not the, the way that that case was decided uh, as being timely, uh, the three-month parameter. And so I'm wondering if that's something new or if I had an ill-informed attorney. Um, I can definitely check. I know there was a change that happened in recent years because the bulk registration process is new to the USCO as well. Mm -hmm. so I can pull the exact details of when that was updated and send it to you. So, okay. so Anna, if I'm understanding correctly, if I have an image that I shot a few years ago and yeah. I licensed it to a client and I see that it's that someone's using it illegally, if yes. I if I register it at that time, is is that is that a timely fashion within three months of of me realizing it's being infringed on? Within the three months of the infringement actually happening. Oh, well, is that, I think that has changed, uh, uh, Mr. Blake. I think that has, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds different than, than what I was, you know, what was explained to me, um, both by the court and by the attorney I was working with. <laughs> me, me too. Yeah, Brian's got his hand up there. Sure. Yeah, hey, hey, how are you? Um, yeah. I just wanted to ask of... Uh, how it compares with uh, registering as published versus unpublished. If you see your image used and then you register it as, I would assume, as published, is that correct? So the way it works is published versus unpublished really uh, differentiates between whether it's been published online. Um, unpublished is if it's uh, been published basically in a newspaper or a book. Okay, can you can you repeat that and, and, and just clear it? you You're saying that if it's used online, it can be considered unpublished? If it's used online, then it's considered published. Mm. So it's not about who is using your work online. It's about whether you've published your work online or not. That's the determinant. Okay. And what if you're, I guess, if you show it on your website as a new sample of your work, then it is considered published? That's right. So the published date is the date that you have put it online. Okay. So that, that, the, so how does that impact whether or not you can uh, you can pursue someone who's stealing your work illegally? The the publication is my understanding. The way you explained it previously um, doesn't is kind of irrelevant. What's relevant is that your images are registered within ninety days of noticing an infringement. That's is right. That correct? Yeah. So okay, ideally, so the you want to is irrelevant. The publication date is what the USEO uses in order to register your image. And that for the bulk registration, that's the calendar year that they'll use as well to determine it. So when you're bulk registering, it's based off of the calendar year that you've published your work online. And when your work gets published with the USEO uh, or registered with the USEO, they act for, asked for the published date that you've published your work online. Okay. Thank so that's you. where that comes into play. Okay. Okay. So, uh, one more question then. If you are doing a bulk res registration, and let's say, for example, I'm publishing two images from a recent architectural shoot, yes, and I put them on my website as samples from this photo shoot, yes, uh, to promote my work, yet there's let's say 15 other images from the same photo shoot, would only those two be required for me to publish, uh, excuse me, to register as previously pu as published images and the others I need to register as unpublished images? But the other ones are also on your website? No, I'm saying I would put maybe two on my website to show samples of my most yeah. recent work and then the other 
let's say 10 of them, 10 shots I have not published Mm -hmm. or shown on my website. So would I, I, I can't really, it doesn't sound to me like it's economically practical to register bulk published images unless because I'd have to give a specific date for each, correct? Yes, the date that you've published them online. Um, if So the other 10 images, if they don't get published online anywhere, not just on your website, like if you don't share them on your social media or if you have a Flickr account, things like that, um, then they are technically considered unpublished. So they wouldn't be able to go through the bulk registration process. Okay, so when there are published images, uh, you can bulk register those, but you have to give the specific date of when they were published or put online on your website, and there's room on the application to um, submit specific dates, even in bulk, for each individual image? Yes. And what I can do after this okay. call, if you'd like, uh, I can send out a, the template for the USEO registration report that we use. So you can see the information that would be required. Okay. So you can, I guess my main point is that it's, uh, it can still be a practical thing to bulk register, even if they're published at different dates. Yes. As long as okay. it's within the same calendar year. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. And I also wanted to give a a quick uh, uh, shout out to how phenomenal it has been working with Pixie. (laughs) I think you work really closely with our colleague Mandy, right? Yes. Yeah, she speaks very nicely of you often. (laughs) Okay. Well, they're they're excellent. If you all, whoever's out there listening, if you have not uh, tried Pixie, they make it pretty doggone seamless so uh i encourage you to um, take them up on a such a very attractive offer to help uh monitor and um police your work and turn it into real dollars so thank you i'm glad you're having a good experience um i'd be happy to show you through our web app as well uh, if you'd like to see what that looks like, I have a, a demo account up. So once you log in, the first thing that you would do is import your images. And we have several import uh, options available. So as Notley mentioned earlier, he's using his Flickr as a plugin. You can use Instagram, Photo Shelter, Photo Deck, Smug Mugs, and Folio, Tumblr. Um, or you can upload directly from your computer, Google Drive, or your Dropbox. And this will upload all your images directly into our portal. Um, The good thing about using one of these import sources is that it will actually bring over some metadata for us. So, for example, if you're using things, um, if you're importing from Flickr or Instagram, it'll give us metadata on when that was published online. Um, So we can use that actually as part of the registration process, but also as part of the case submission process. So it'll make it a little bit easier for you to... uh, to fill in the forms once you're at that stage. And then once you've uploaded your images, they all live in the image section. And if you click and drill down within the image itself, you will be able to see when the last time that it was scanned, the date that it was imported, how it was imported into our system, uh, the number of times that we've carried out scans on that image, the number of times that we have found it online, And if you have submitted any cases to us, how many and the outcomes of it, if they were uh, revenue recovery. And in here at the bottom, you'd also be able to either registrate um, a request of copyright registration or see the registration that we have on file under the details section. And then once you've uploaded your images, we deliver back the matches for them online. And this is the section where you'd be able to see that in. Um, And as I mentioned, we help categorize them just based off our experience in order to make it a little bit easier for photographers to look through everything. So top matches, these are highlighted by us because through our algorithm and our AI, we're able to identify which domains and infringers look like they're gonna be most valuable for pursuit. So we usually categorize those here in top matches. So in here, I can see 
a list of, uh, of images and I can actually click through and it'll take me to the match. It'll take me to the website where it's being used and I can pop over, see if I can find my image on that website. Sometimes if it's not showing up at first click, it might be within an image carousel or somewhere else within the website. So it may take a little bit of peeking around to see exactly where it's showing up. Um, but if I saw my image on there and it wasn't one of my clients or um, it was an image that I wanted to pursue for resolution, what I would do is click submit case and start the process. Um, if this was a smaller infringer like an individual or a blogger, I would use the send takedown option. Or if this was a, or a project that I had worked on where it was authorized and this is my client's website, I would click on approved use. Not my image is reserved for when occasionally we deliver false positives, meaning that it's an image that looks very close to yours, but not exactly identical. So you would just click not my image. Um, this happens often of when it comes to pictures of sunsets and moons because the moon can look so similar in so many pictures. It's easy for the system to pick it up as being the same. Or if it's something that you're not looking to pursue, you would just click ignore. Um, and what that does, when you're clicking approved use or ignore, what it does is it picks up this page URL and it uh, basically uh, excludes it from the results. So you won't see it again. And then if we go back to the matches section, uh, we do have some other categories in here. So the next best category to use if you don't see any results in top matches is commercial. These are also commercial or organizational usages and they're very valuable for pursuit. Uh, we've also got it broken down by where your imagery is being used. The United States is most likely going to be the highest. We see over 65% of the infringements for our photographers happening in the United States. And then the UK and Germany are, are closely second um, for infringements. The other thing that you can do in here is narrow down your results even further by going into your profile and in the settings section, you can actually narrow down the countries that you're seeing results for. So we have the Pixie jurisdictions, which are the ones that we can actually take action in and recover revenue. And then you have the rest of the world. So if you weren't interested in seeing whether your work's ending up in Egypt or Madagascar, you can just deselect this part and leave just the Pixie jurisdictions. And that way you're only seeing where your work is being used in uh, locations where we can actually take action. In these countries identified as the rest of the world, you can still send takedown notices to get your imagery removed. And then you can also further narrow down by the platforms that you want to see or not see. So for example, if you're not interested in seeing whether your work ends up on Etsy or AliExpress, you can deselect those. Or if you're looking only specifically to find your imagery on one platform, what you can do is deselect everything except that. So let's say you were really keen on finding where your work is being used on Facebook. You can deselect all the platforms and leave just Facebook. And then categories are domain categories. We've identified some that um, are basically categorized as spam um, and aren't worthwhile for pursuing. So you can always deselect those as they add more, more noise into your pool of matches. And then once you have submitted cases through the process, there is a case section here and you'll be able to see all your submissions and where they're at um, and get updates here. And once they have been resolved, you can see them in the closed section and the amount of payout received is uh, shown here as well. And your takedowns are in this section. So every time you send out a takedown request, um, it'll live here and it'll be orange while it's online. And if it's been removed, it will show a check mark and the little area will turn gray and it'll show that it's been removed. So this one's been taken offline. These three are still there. If you were looking to register your images, you can do so here under the register section. And this is where it gives you the option to register bulk or single registrations. It'll also show anything that you have registered with us um, and it'll all live in this section as well. 
you click submit registration just to start the process. Any questions about that? One of the things that Alan and I spoke about doing is as you're all working on familiarizing yourself with the system and we wanted to offer a free advanced membership for three months to the members. Um, and I'll just let you see the benefits of an advanced membership. Uh, basically, we have a free plan where you can uh, upload up to 500 images that we'll be scanning through. Anything above that is a paid plan. So our advanced membership entitles you to 30,000 images to be monitored with a higher scanning priority, meaning that we're going to be scanning through the images a lot more often. And it gives you the option to send up to 300 takedown notices per month. So if you are interested in pursuing this option, um, I will leave my email and contact information with Alan. And if you sign up, you can let me know and I will upgrade your account to the advanced plan from the free. I'll, I'll send an email out um, after this meeting uh, with, with a couple of things that uh, Juan has already mentioned, uh, that being one of them. But, uh, so, and then I'll also post that information on the Facebook pages of each of the groups so that you can access them there. So, um, and then as this goes online, um, uh, there's probably some things I won't put in the in the description of, of the video because they're they'd be you know just something we don't want to offer to everybody in the world but um, like maybe perhaps uh the form that you mentioned that might be something that people yeah. would like to look at so i've got an article on copyright registrations that i've recently written as well so i can send that out it just outlines yeah. the benefit of it um, and i'll send out the template that link would be would be wonderful um i have a question yeah yeah Oh, yeah. So I logged in like five minutes behind schedule. So I hope, well, if you did answer this, so um, for registrating uh, the images up to 750, yes. what's the fee that you would charge to register that? $119 per bulk registration. $119. And then there's also like where, you know, you have to register. There's like an expedited version too, right? Or are you just, how long does it get? How long, let me, how long after you registered do you get the letter of confirmation that it's been copyrighted? It's been taking a bit longer. The USU is a little bit further behind. We're not part of the expedited process, but it can take up to six months for them to, to send back the certificates. Got it. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So, yes, so I wanna, uh, that's, that's a good point. So, does our registration count from the day that we file it or the day that they send the certificate to us? It's when uh, you file it, but okay. the certificates, they're just been behind in the process. So yeah, it takes a while. it's taken a while. All right. Any other questions? I wondered if maybe, uh, sorry, Christopher, let me just let me, she, you, we, in our private conversation, we, I ask you about fees um, uh, as far as percentages and things like that in recovery. Could you maybe just address that just briefly so we, we know? I mean, most of us are used to paying the attorney fee, but uh, just tell us how Pixie handles the fee. Yeah, the split, the split is 50-50 for us um, based off of the revenue recovery. So we'll okay. just go ahead based off of the information that you provide us for payment, either your PayPal or your bank account, whatever that resolution is, uh, we'll retain 50% for us and then deposit the other 50% for you. Sorry, Christopher. <laughs> yes, I was just going to ask um, <clears throat> whether you're familiar with any variations on the setup as far as, as far as it goes with people working in Canada? And so in Canada, it's still 50-50 as well. Um, one of the things, I mean, the service is fantastic because it's usually hard to work with lawyers through contingency in a lot of these markets. So it's taken a while to actually build that out and get those partnerships going. Um, we do have a program uh, available that is a, a bit of a lower fee depending on the level of resolution. And I think I've shared that with you as well, Alan. So mm -hmm. um, the higher the rev resolution amounts that we can uh, we can recover, we can lower the fee there. Uh, so it's a vol volume-based incentive. 
And as far as the registration of copyright, etc., <clears throat> are there variations from the US in that in that respect? Do you know? In terms of the fees? No, in, in terms of, of of actually registering the images. Yeah, there is. It is a different process in Canada, uh, and we do offer registrations in Canada as well. The US you're specific just for the US market. I understand. Very good. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Well, I will go ahead and uh, and send out that information. And uh, hopefully, if you'd like to sign up, you can reach out. Uh, my colleagues, Teresa and Susan, that are on the call actually work with helping photographers on board and go through their accounts. And uh, we actually carry out match review sessions where we'll go through the results in your account and identify the ones that you think we think you should pursue uh, to make the process a little bit easier for our photographers and less cumbersome. And uh, we, we'd like to help cons, uh, consult there. Thank you. Uh, I, I will make sure that um, your contact information is available to, to all the membership. And uh, given the fact that we don't have very many people on this call, it's not a reflection of how much traffic I understand. This video will actually see. So yeah. um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to present to us. I know for me it was a real eye-opener because I've handled this on my own up until this point and it's so cumbersome that uh, like Norman said sometimes you just it, you get behind on it and it's yeah it's it's one one more thing that you really don't want to deal with at the end of the day so uh, this was uh, amazing I I had a uh, scan done already and um, it was truly amazing to me to see where all my work showed up in their scan so all of the work <laughs> we'll I'm big in China. China. I can say that I'm real big in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm doing well there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big hit there too. <laughs> so, so thank you, Juan, and thank you to all the members here who are on the the call today. Um, it's been a, been a pleasure, and uh, I will get this posted as quickly as possible, and then that information will be readily available to everyone. Well, Excellent. thank you all. Thank you so Happy much. Happy Friday. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you as well. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. This has been another episode of A Photographer's Life. If you've enjoyed this program, please let us know by liking this episode and subscribing to this channel. A Photographer's Life is brought to you by the Association of Independent Architectural Photographers. This episode is copyrighted and may not be used in full or in part without the written permission of the AIAP. Please join us again soon for another inside look at the world of professional architectural photography.